we've done our small scale tests, and we've learned a thing or two. But if we're going to find out if it's possible to swim in busy water, we're going to have to swim in busy water. So we've come back out here to Alameda to this 10,000 gallon tank that we installed a few years ago. And we're going to put a large bubbler in it. And Adam's going to go for a swim. Do you need anything else, huh? No. Now comes the tricky bit, getting the giant bubbler up and in. All right. Take it on up. So our bubbler is just about ready to be put in place. That's a tight fit. Okay, stop. What happens next is that we hook up the air supply. Okay, go ahead and get us some air. Hi. And we slowly lower the 20 feet to the bottom of this tank, which is full of reasonably clear but quite cold water. Then I will put on some scuba gear, and then we'll bring my friend to do this test, which I hope happens quickly because the squad right now is about 50, 51 degrees. As plans go, it's pretty straightforward. I'm above ground, and yet I'm going scuba diving. Oh my gosh. All right, here we go. How's the water? The water is so cool, I got an instant headache. But you know what's really cool in here? What? Looking out the hole. <laughs> but before Adam can unhook the bubbler, it needs to be in the right position. Is that good now? I think so. When you start to lower it very slowly, we'll do. The aim is to get the bubbler perfectly level to have an even spread of bubbles at the surface. Fire up the generator, please. Slowly bring it up to the mark. It's a gorgeous spurt of bubbles. Can't wait to get into it. Okay, well, I'll put the chain out. With their fully functioning rig in the right position, what's next? This test is pretty much the same as our small scale experiments, except this time we're going to.